In 1976, at a Boston police station, two policemen discussed the arrest of Father John Geoghan for child molestation. A high-ranking cleric talks to the mother of the children. An assistant district attorney then enters the precinct and tells the policeman not to let the press learn what has happened. The arrest is not publicized and Geoghan is released. The Catholic Archdiocese of Boston sex abuse scandal was part of a series of Catholic Church sexual abuse cases in the United States that revealed widespread crimes in the American Roman Catholic Church. In early 2002, the Boston Globe published results of an investigation that led to the criminal prosecutions of five Roman Catholic priests and thrust the sexual abuse of minors by Catholic clergy into the national spotlight. Another accused priest, who was involved in the spotlight scandal, also pleaded guilty. The Globe's coverage encouraged other victims to come forward with allegations of abuse, resulting in numerous lawsuits and more criminal cases. Subsequent investigations and allegations revealed a pattern of sexual abuse and cover-ups in a number of large dioceses across the United States. What had first appeared to be a few isolated cases of abuse became a nationwide scandal, then a global crisis, for the Roman Catholic Church. Ultimately, it became clear that priests and lay members of religious orders in the Catholic Church had sexually abused minors on a scale such that the accusations reached into the thousands over several decades. Although the majority of cases were reported to have occurred in the United States, victims have come forward in other nations such as Ireland, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. A major aggravating factor was the actions of Catholic bishops to keep these crimes secret and to reassign the accused to other parishes and positions where they had continued unsupervised contact with youth, thus allowing the abusers to continue their crimes. The investigation of the scandal by the Boston Globe was titled Spotlight Investigation Abuse in the Catholic Church. Its in-depth reporting was the central subject of Tom McCarthy's film Spotlight in 2015, which won two Academy Awards, including Best Picture. The rest of the video is the movie recap of film Spotlight. In 2001, Marty Baron, the new managing editor of the Boston Globe, meets Walter Robbie Robinson, the editor of the newspaper's Spotlight investigative team. After Barron reads a Globe article about a lawyer, Mitchell Garabedian, charging that Cardinal Bernard Law, the Archbishop of Boston, knew about Geoghan's sexual abuse of children and did nothing to stop Geoghan, Barron urges the Spotlight team to investigate. Journalist Michael Rizindis contacts Garabedian, who initially declines to be interviewed. Though Rizindis is told not to, Rizindis reveals that he is on the Spotlight team, persuading Garabedian to talk. Initially believing that they are following the story of one priest who was moved to new assignment several times, the Spotlight team begin to uncover a pattern of sexual abuse by other priests in Massachusetts and an ongoing cover-up by the Boston Archdiocese. Through Phil Saviano, who heads the Victims' Rights Group Survivors Network of those abused by priests, SNAP, the team is led to widen their search to 13 priests. They learn through Richard Sipe, a former priest who worked to rehabilitate sexually abusive priests, that Sipe's findings suggest that there are approximately 90 abusive priests in Boston, 6% of priests. Through their research, the team develops a list of 87 names and begin to find victims to back up their suspicions. The investigation begins to take its toll on the team. Reporter Matt Carroll learns one of the priest treatment centers is on the same block as his family's home but is unable to tell his children or his neighbors. Reporter Sasha Pfeiffer finds herself unable to attend church with her grandmother after witnessing the scope of the investigation. Rizindis pushes to get the story out quickly to prevent further abuse. And Robinson faces pushback from some of his close friends who he learns were complicit in covering up the abuse. When the September 11th attacks occur, the team is forced to deprioritize the story. They regain momentum when Rizindis learns from Garabedian that there are publicly available documents that confirm Cardinal Law was made aware of the abuse and ignored it. Although Rizindis argues vociferously to run the story immediately, before more victims suffer and rival newspapers publish comparable articles, Robinson steadfastly refuses, arguing the team needs to research further so that the systemic problem can be more fully exposed. After the Globe wins a case to have even more legal documents unsealed that provide the evidence of that larger picture, the Spotlight team finally begins to write the story and plan to publish their findings in early 2002. 
As they are about to go to print, Robinson admits he learned during the investigation that he was sent a list of 20 sexually abusive priests by lawyer Eric McLeish in 1993, on which Robinson never followed up. Barron still commends Robinson and the Spotlight team's efforts to expose the crimes now. The story goes to print with a web link to the documents that expose laws in action and a phone number for victims of abusive priests. The next morning, the team is inundated with calls from victims coming forward to tell their stories. A textual epilogue notes that Law resigned in December 2002 and was eventually promoted to the Basilica di Santa Maria Maggiore, in Rome, and presents a list of 105 U.S. communities, and 101 others around the world where major scandals involving abuse by priests have taken place.